All right, last time we learned how to create a sprite and make it move across the screen. And this is where we ended up. We had a sprite moving across the screen and wrapping around the edges so that it never gets lost. Now, if you're following along, you can get the code for the last lesson in the link below. Okay, so what we'd like to do is look at how we can replace that little green square with some nice graphics that look like a character that would be moving around on the screen. These little rectangles are really useful to use as sprites when you're getting stuff working, and I usually recommend you start that way. And once you have everything working, then you can replace it with the graphics that you want to use. So the question is, if you're not very artistically talented yourself, uh, in which case you could draw the characters you want to use, is where do you get art to use in your projects? And it's very important to remember that you shouldn't use art that you don't have the rights to use. You know, you can go online and you can search up a picture of Mario and or a Pokemon and you can use that in your game, but because you don't own that picture, you will get in trouble if you try and put your game online and let other people see it. So to be safe, it's a good idea to stick with art that you have permission to use. Fortunately, there is a really cool website called opengameart.org. And if you go there, it is full of all sorts of art and sound and music that artists have created for you to be able to use. And you can use it however you like in your games. I recommend you go over here to the search box and you type in Kenny, K-E-N-N-E-Y. Kenny is a very well-known artist who has created all kinds of really great uh, graphics packs to use for making different kinds of games. And they're really good looking. Um, if you scroll down here, you can see there's one called Platformer Art Complete Pack. And this is what we're going to use today. Now you can go to Open Game Art and download download this, or you can just download the particular images we're going to use uh, in the link below the video. But this art pack looks really nice. It has all sorts of stuff to make, as you can see, all kinds of different games. It has uh, characters, enemies, platforms, items, lots more than we'll ever be able to use uh, to customize your game and make it look however you like. Okay, so in order to use the graphics in our game, we're going to need to have the graphics file, and we're going to need to tell our game to load it. So the first question is, where do we put our files? Um, so I'm using a folder called Tutorials, and that's where I'm creating all of these programs that we're working on in this series. Um, and I've made a folder called IMG, short for image. Um, and in that image folder, I have placed this little graphic P1 jump. Uh, again, if you click on the link below in the video, you can download this image, or you can find it in that graphics pack if you download the whole pack from Open Game Art. Okay, but now we have this one graphic called P1 underscore jump dot PNG. To load this graphic into our program, we need to tell the program where that file actually is on the computer's hard drive. And depending on what kind of computer you're using, uh, a Windows computer, a Macintosh computer, or even a Linux computer, uh, the way that files are organized might be different. So we want to be careful that we do this the right way so that this program will run on any kind of computer and it'll know just to look in that IMG folder and find the file. The first thing we need to do is we need to import OS up here. This will give us some commands to help us set up the folder and point to the right place. Now since we're eventually going to load different graphics and maybe even sounds, uh, we want to set up some folders for this. So let's just set up where the folders are so the game knows where the folders are that it needs to look. Okay, so set up 
and I'm going to call these assets. Assets are the game development term for the art and sound that goes into your game. So we're going to set up those folders. And the first one is going to be the game folder. That's that's where is this file, this actual Python file that we're running, where is it located? Well, the command to find that out is os.path.durname file. Okay, so this, this variable file with the double underscores under it is a special variable that Python keeps track of where it knows the name of the file itself. And see that pop up there? That's the full location on my computer of where this file is. That's going to look different on yours because yours might be in a different place. Now, for example, if you are on a Windows computer, it might look like this. Have a C colon at the beginning or maybe a different letter, backslash, and then it could be you know, some name like that. But on, so that's on Windows, and on a Mac, it might be uh, more like this. Like that. So these are two different ways that the two different computers list where folders are. The Documents folder is inside the Chris folder, which is inside the Users folder. Okay, and this dir name will just give us that directory, which is another name for folder. So it tells us what folder that is. Now we also want to tell it that the images are going to be in a folder underneath that. So the image folder is going to be os.path.join, which is a command to join two paths together. So it's game folder, comma, img. And what that will do is join those two together by putting either the backslash if you're on a Windows computer or the forward slash if you're on a Mac or Linux computer. So they should look like that. So that's just a little extra work we have to do to make sure that this will work on any computer we might be running the program on. But now we have this image folder defined and we can use that to load the graphics. So we're going to go down here to our player sprite. And now we don't want to use just a plain green rectangle anymore. So we're going to change this self.image into something new. And what we're going to do is we're going to say pygame.image.load. And that says I want to load a graphics file off of the hard drive. And it's going to be located right in this image folder. But then it needs to be at the end. So for example, you know, the, the actual p1 underscore jump dot png name needs to go at the end like that. So we have to use that join command one more time. os.path.join. And we just want to join our image folder and the name of the file we want, which is p1 underscore jump dot png. And then when you load an image in Pygame, it's very important that you put .convert at the end of loading it. So what that will do is it will load the image and then convert it into a form that Pygame can manipulate easily. If you leave out this step, your game will be slower. Okay. Now, right here, we don't want to fill that image with green anymore because we now have a cool looking image. We don't need to change the rect here because the git rect command will look at that image and find the right rectangle. So now let's try running it and see what happens. There we go. Now we have our sprite using that little graphic. But we have one other small problem. Look what happens if we go down here to our draw part of our loop and we say instead we're going to fill the screen with blue instead of black. We have blue up here already. So now I should have a blue background. But let's see what it looks like. There we go. Can you see that black rectangle around our sprite? Well, that's a problem. 
when a computer loads an image file, that file is always a rectangle. A computer can only store things in rectangles. Even though the shape might be drawn in some crazy curve shape, it still has a rectangle around it. And we want to tell the computer that the stuff around that rectangle, that part we saw in black, should be transparent. Or in other words, it shouldn't be drawn. So that way, if the sprite is being drawn on top of a background or another image, we should just see what's back there. So we have to tell it to ignore that portion of the sprite. And we can do that by adding right here, self.image, set color key. And this command just says, tell me what color you want me to ignore or make transparent. So we're going to say make black transparent, because that's what we saw on the image. And now our sprite has no weird rectangle around it. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this lesson. We took our sprite and we changed it into an image here, and now it's moving across the screen. But before we go, let's just add one more fun little thing to our update section. Let's also make the sprite move up and down. So I'm going to add a Y speed of 5. And whenever the sprite moves, its rectangle Y is going to get that Y speed added to it. So that means it's going downwards, right? Because Y gets bigger as you go down. So I don't want it to go off the screen. So we're going to say if the rectangle's bottom ever gets below, it's getting bigger, height minus 200, say. So 200 pixels up from the bottom. If we pass that line, then we're going to reverse direction and start going upward. So we need to change the y speed to be negative 5. And we also need to do the opposite when it gets up towards the top. So if the top of the rectangle is ever less than 200, then we'll change the y speed back to 5. Now our little guy looks like he's jumping across the screen. All right, try that out, play with it, see what else you can do in the update section. Anything you do in here, remember, happens every frame of the animation. So the bigger number the speeds are, that's how many pixels that character is going to move. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.